This is a video for a project called Fragments of Self that I've agreed to be part of. I have to talk for a few minutes about a subject written on a bit of paper and the next one is stories and storytelling. Blood runs through my veins and I'm grateful for it. But along with the blood, stories run through my veins as well. And I am more grateful than them, even to the blood that keeps me alive, because it's stories that get me up in the morning and enable me to drift off at night. It's stories that preoccupy me, it's stories that have given me the possibility to write a body of work. It's stories that calm me, stories that sing to me out of love and stories that make me laugh or even make me cry. In my life, stories are everything and they're something to pass on like a baton. Beyond the usual incarnation of the stories that we know and we tell, I'm interested in layers and levels that are often invisible to people. I've come to learn that to understand stories and how they work, you have to recalibrate your psyche, as it were, and to think in a different way. Not to question. That's so important, not to question, but rather to absorb. In my travels, whether they're real in Africa, Asia, Latin America, anywhere, or in library books, I have collected thousands of stories, stories which I would say are part of this communal encyclopedia of humanity that in our family we call folklore. In many ways, the word folklore is dated now and it's misunderstood. To me, what folklore is, is a kind of repository of human knowledge, experience, know-how, and it's ready and waiting for anyone who has an interest to tap into it. The most extraordinary thing about stories amassed through human history, whether it be, you know, they be in a small village in the upper Amazon or in a shack nailed to the Himalayan mountain strongholds, these stories have a magical ingredient. They work at our subconscious and they are a magic wand or a magic spell that has the ability to change the way we see things, to calm us, to solve our problems and to show us where doors that are invisible lie. I've written a book, I've written several books about stories, but I wrote a book called In Arabian Nights that tried to look at stories and storytelling as a way to understand the Kingdom of Morocco. And I think it was an excellent lens through which to observe Morocco because almost everything in that country, in one way or another, is tethered to a fictional or fantastical tapestry of thought and belief. In my travels, what I've tried to do is to appreciate how a story is being told to me 
and the effect that it's having on me as well as on the person who's recounting the tale or the story. I've heard in my time some of the greatest storytellers perform and I think that's what it is. It is a performance. I'm certainly no great oral storyteller. I try my best, but it's a skill that I can only equate with a fine artist, fine art artist, you know, drawing with such dexterity a picture of a bird on a tree. The same can be said for a storyteller. When a storyteller is doing their work at the most profound, extraordinary level, you forget about them. They're not there at all, they're invisible. The way I see it, the greatest storytellers in human history are invisible. We don't know that they're there. We forget about it because they've surpassed the need to be seen. I really encourage anyone watching this with an interest in stories or storytelling to root their way through collections such as The Thousand and One Nights and others. I'm a massive fan of the, what are called Oriental treasuries, like Alf Laila Balaila, Thousand and One Nights, and Anta Wa Abla, and others. As a kid, I was told stories from morning till night. I was told stories about princes and princesses and dragons and fire-breathing gin. I was told stories about stories and I was encouraged to allow my mind to slip into this twilight zone of wonder. And that for me is the zone where the stories take place. I am a huge believer that stories have an ability to keep humanity on track and to act as a kind of counterweight to the disturbances and the dystopia of the modern world. I think what is so important is for us all to calm down, to shut down this digital overload to relax and to withdraw into the kind of story twilight zone. It's, it's critical and it's, it's, in my opinion, the only thing that will enable us as a race to survive because we all know that the world around us is speeding up and the world around us is suffering from the traumas that humanity has um, exposed it to. I think if we want to see the future clearly, we have to embrace the knowledge, the know-how of the past. And the best place to find that is in the folklore and the stories left to us by our ancestors.